Hello everybody and welcome to the AOC Gaming League of Ch Gaming League of Champions powered by VRRC. You're here tonight to watch the first of four rounds in the first of four championships. Hello everybody and welcome to Virtual Reality Racing Club for this the first round of the Academy Mazda MX5 Cup here at Brands Hatch Indy. I am Edward May and joining me in the comms box for this evening is Dave Marshall. And Good evening everyone. Welcome along wherever you are in the world to the final round of the Aegon by AOC Cayman Cup here on the VRC. It uh, feels like it's been a long season but actually it was only six weeks ago that we got started uh, at Road Atlanta and now here we are 10 races later Still no closer to deciding the outcome of the championship, uh, but it will be settled over the next hour and a half or so with two races here at the Mugello circuit in Italy. Andy McEwen here with Jack Oliphant alongside me as usual. They are indeed. So as the lights come on, the engine notes will rise and we will be racing for the first time here at the AOC Gaming League of Champions powered by VRRC. And it is Ryan Elliott who's got a fantastic start into the first corner. Callum Newsham doing well as well. I think Ruriggs managed to hold his third place. As the lights start to get under the way, we can get excited for a second bout of racing. As the engine notes rise, and for the second time this evening, on a Tuesday night, we can see that they're racing here. Luke Weston on ball position, obviously, after a reverse grid top 10. Robbie Stapleford means he starts on second place and has to be one of the favourites, probably, to get an early lead into the first corner. He doesn't quite get it into the first corner. Luke Weston looks good defensively, but Scott Thorne goes wide on the exit of T1. Andy Dorman, but here we go. Stapleford has already got his nose up the inside for Craner Curves. That means he's going to have the outside for Old Hairpin, but as Weston gets a little bit loose on Craner Curves, it is going to be Robbie Stapleford. Takes a race lead, but there's contact in the background. Andy Dorman's going backwards because he's gone backwards off of a Old Hairpin. And that, who's that as well? That's Simon Thorpe, Simon unfortunately. Thorpe, yeah. Yeah, so unfortunately, a few little spin, uh, a few little spins are tags, but luckily it looks like Andy Dorman's managed to keep momentum uh, and come back onto the track here. But I tell you what, other than that, how can you get so many tracks side by side round the same corner? It's madness, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's pure touring car magic that what we're watching here. And as I say, that the magic ends for uh, Scott Thorne, unfortunately. He's going to go three wide into the chicane, which is oh. something I've never advised oh. any driver to do for this exact reason. Scott Thorne flies into the uh, into the barrier on the right-hand side, and a few other drivers, I think, has joined him as well. Uh, Kletz has gone and taken advantage. He's up to 12th place now, but Ryan Elliott up to 6th after coming, uh, in fact, I think he started about 6th place, actually, uh, Ryan Elliott. Um, Callum Newsham's gone from 11th place up to 7th. He didn't take advantage of the reverse grid, finishing in 11th place. Luke Weston's gone from 1st down to 3rd. Tempera, that is uh, one of the new drivers, Paolo Tempera. He's up to 3rd place at the moment. 2nd uh, place at the moment, sorry. My timing screen is a little bit different to the one on the screen at the moment. Uh, Jack McIntyre, he's in ninth. of Jordan Brennan, the two drivers that were neck and neck for race number 1 victory, and neck and neck to try and keep in the top 8. up to you know carry on even though his car is definitely not in the best of shapes he's still able to get some slipstream off of Simon Thorpe and well down the inside into Brundle and Nelson he's going to go a real action zone I think we're going to see plenty of moves being made here this evening look at that door banging on the way in I think Brad Smith is going to take that position yes he does very committed move there wasn't a hanging about was Brad meanwhile further up the field where we can see this little train starting to form and Alex Bennett, he's going to try and check out, isn't he? He's got about one and a half seconds gap to the rest of the field. Good start for Alex Bennett. He's going to try and capitalise on what's going to be a fight here, potentially, between Rich Hayden and Teddy Hines. Teddy, he's going to look down the inside, but there's contact. Contact from second place. Both drivers spinning off into the gravel. Massive, massive moment. And there's still incidents oh. carrying on here. Who's that? That's Luke Weston. Someone else is involved. Mick Sun, I think, comes through and crashes into the wall at Druids, and they have another incident. Oh, my I'll, word. It's I'll all was... kicking off. Simon Thorpe, race one winner involved. 
know someone who deserves driver of the day, drop it in the chat because we'd love to hear from you as well. But first of all, we've got to get this race start. We've got to get the engine notes up. We have the lights on and we are about to get racing for the Super Touring Championship with Luke Weston on pole position along with Chris Shepard. Two rear wheel drives getting an absolute thunderous start towards the first corner. The rest of the field, Phil Regan included, will be a little bit left of dust. But you can be assured that halfway through this lap, Phil Regan will probably be right back there with Weston and Shepard. But I don't think Smith will be as he gets turned around. And to be fair, I'm not entirely sure how he did it, but... I think he's facing in the right direction. He seems to have got T-boned round, then turned back round, which is quite sensational stuff. And Smith is fighting for 12th position down Grainer Curves. And he's going to have to shake that one off really quickly. He's getting a, a little bit of a taste of what it's like to race in sim racing. And it doesn't matter what you drive on, whether it's a set of Corsa or high racing or real life or anything. If you're racing touring cars, you're bound to get hit. But hopefully, we'll keep it clean as... Who's that? It's Weston up. Weston, our ball position man, and another driver flying off the outside, who I believe was Kenny Press, potentially. I'm not entirely sure, but he's at the back of the field, so I'm guessing so. So Nicky Taylor is now leading this race from Chris Shepard. There's more chaos through Coppice. And I'm, I don't know, I think Beard is one of them as a driver gets flown off on the outside, and I believe that's Chris Shepard. Chris Shepard is off the, right, off the circuit as they go down towards the first, well, sorry, the final chicane for the first time, I should say. I think Cal Felvis is in the race lead, but it's very difficult to tell at the moment because some people may have spawned back to the pit. In fact, it is Carl Felvis, but it is a safety car. And the lap times that they're putting in as well. Jordan Brennan on that last lap, about half a second quicker. So he is closing fast, but he's only got about two and a half minutes left. What a camera angle we have brought to us here by Tom O'Farrell as they go through Old Hairpin. Oh, McIntyre got a little <laughs> bit of corrective oversteer at the exit of Old Hairpin. I can tell you that is just one of the most sensational feelings with a little bit of oversteer through Old Hairpin. Foot flat to the floor in a rear wheel drive car is absolutely awesome. If they come up towards McLean, try and clip that second apex, a late apex, so he can straighten up the corner and get the power down, especially in this front wheel drive and rear wheel, uh, sorry, in this rear wheel drive BMW over coppice. Always difficult. Don't know when to get the power down because you can run wide or you can go narrow. I imagine if you're a front wheel drive, you want to go narrow in a rear wheel drive, you want to probably run wide. Although, Dave, you're probably about to tell me that that's the opposite way around. Uh, no, it completely on driver preference. Some drivers... Oh, it's oh huge oh, map! McIntyre's gone round! McIntyre under his own fuel. And that's exactly the crash that I've done, actually. Kyle Felvers, pull up behind him. Paul Zanatechi is also about a level with actually Kyle Felvers. This is going to be a case of who's latest on the brakes. Ashley B is going to try and go around the outside. In fact, Paul Zanatechi is trying to go around the outside of all of them. Will Powell's going to try and follow Kyle Felvers down through Craners. But has Paul found a gap? Will but He is. Paul's found a gap up into P2. Ahead of Will Powell. Will Powell now down to third place. And Ashley B right on the bumper. And I tell you what... Look who's in the background. Jack Mack up into P5. Yeah, Jack Mack obviously in the uh, BMW. Apart from Jack Mack, every one of the top nine is a, a, a Volvo S40. Uh, top ten even is a Volvo S40. Will Powell going into second place, but Zanatechi getting him back. I'm surprised there's not been more contact. As, oh, I'll tell you what, Zanatechi. That is a quite amazing um, car control. Keeping his foot flat in it. One of the advantages of uh, front-wheel drive, of course. You get a bit of a tap on the rear end. Just keep your foot in it. It'll probably end up okay. It'll probably end up in a straight line. Altitude Esports right up there, though. Here comes Fletcher and Beard. Beard up the inside. It's going to be an ambitious move. There's one that's not going to come off. As McIntyre really shows his sim experience. Just launches up the inside there, the Rocket Sim Sport driver, and uh, makes himself into sixth position. Thorn is the cork in the bottle, and probably the thorn in the side of a lot of these drivers. McIntyre goes for a move on three drivers at once. He doesn't quite get past Thorn, but I'll tell you what, he gets past Webb. He nudges him off the circuit for good measure as well. As Altitude Esports driver Beard trumps across. Brennan has gone through. Dadswell's gone through on Webb as well. So those drivers are involved with this one as they come down. Crane occurs. It's hard to keep up with this one. All we know is it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's very close. This there aren't really many opportunities to overtake here, though. But if so, oh, he has made a mistake. Like he has. It will open the door, won't it, for Luke Weston in the background, looming large as they make their way through the hall bends for the final time in this first race at Cadwell Park. It's going right down to the wire. Look at this. Luke <laughs> Weston's trying to find any way through, pushing him around, trying to find an opening. There's none seemingly appearing for him so unfortunately luke weston misses out on the podium but at the top for the first time this series his first race victory goes to brad smith the first race at cadwell park it was a long time coming good to see him finally 
get his first victory. Ernie Dorman there in second place. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise you wanted to get me. Now you've flashed your lights, so I'll just put the indicator on, shall I? Because that ain't going to happen here. Just over a lap to go. Shepard is uh, getting his elbows out here to hang on to the race lead. And so far, it's working. And of course, he can play off Felvis against Axelson, which is exactly what happened there. He backed up Felvis into the third place driver. He runs wide again there, does Shepard at the last corner. But that should give him good traction on the exit, which it does. On board with Kyle Felvis, then the final lap of the season begins. And we're a lot, lot closer this time uh, than we were a lap ago. This is it. Last chance saloon, then Felvis to the outside line. We've seen this move work before. We've seen Felvis make this move work before for the race lead in race one against Eric Axelson. Now he tries to do the same thing to Chris Shepard. Shepard late on the brakes, gets to the apex first, but Felvis has the momentum on the outside line. There's going to be a squeeze on the exit, but there's nothing that Shepard can do. The next corner is a left-hander. That plays into the hands of Kyle Felvis, who gets the lead away. Shepard down to second, but Nicky Taylor closing on the lot of them. All that aware of the situation, but right now, it's Taylor's championship to lose into the last corner. He looks up the inside. What is he doing? Gets into the left rear corner of Eric Axelson. You, oh, you don't need to be doing this, Nicky. You've got the championship. Out of the corner we go. Kyle Felvis gets the race win. Second place will go to Chris Shepard. Third to Eric Axelson. But against all the odds, you could say, the champion provisionally is Nicky Taylor. He crosses the line in fourth position. <laughs> He's given me kittens. Goodness only knows how his friends and family watching at home must feel. But that was a fighting drive to fourth. And we think provisionally that that gives him the championship. Joel Laskin fifth, Ethan Hill in sixth. Well, the clock has ticked to zero. And for the second race of the evening, we're going to see Simon Reed. He got pole position. Wasn't enough in the first race. But the second race goes the way of Simon Reed. Second time's the charm for him. Bit of the curve there in real life. But I don't think these MX-5s on a set of course are like that a little bit too much as Andy Dorman. Look at the run he's going to get now out of the corner. Two abreast. They will go down underneath the bridge into the Brundle and Nelson chicane complex. Who's going to be braver though? Who's going to be the most committed? It's going to be Andy Dorman, but there's contact there. Andy Dorman spins out and has a collision there. And is, are we going to see? No, it's not. I thought we were going to see Brad Smith come through to take back second place. But Look at Sam Milner. Looking too far in front. Sam Milner's arriving at the scene. Oh, you know what? I've got a smile on my face, but I bet that was just because Brad saw what was happening up in front and thought, I can't believe my luck. Both the drivers take themselves out, and in doing so, binned it himself, and Sam Milner's probably in fifth place going, blink an egg, I could have a podium here. I'm just going to drive and try and stay on the track. 